In this section, we're going to be solving inequalities. And because our solution sets are going to have infinite answers, meaning I can never count them, I would never stop counting them, I need a better way to write my answers rather than just listing the values. So what we're going to do here is we're going to practice what's called interval notation. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to relate this to something that you already probably know how to do, which is taking an inequality and graphing it on the number line. So this first inequality says my x's are bigger than 5 and at the same time less than or equal to 15. So the numbers 5 and 15 are what we call the boundaries of this interval. So I'm going to have 5 here, I'm going to have 15 here. Now what you've probably used in the past is for a less than or greater than symbol you've used an open circle and for a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to you've used a filled in circle. We're going to adjust that notation a little bit. For a sign that does not have an equality we are going to use a parenthesis. So I'm going to put a parenthesis on this side of the interval. On this side when we do have equals we are going to use a bracket and all the values that are greater than 5 and less than or equal to 15 are from here to here. Now that's a picture. I don't always want to have to draw a picture. I want to communicate very clearly and very quickly to people what my interval is. So here's how interval notation works. What you do is you tell people what is the lower boundary? What's the lowest value? The lowest value of this picture is 5, comma. What is the largest value? What's the furthest to the right this interval goes? Well, that is 15. At the end without the equals, you put a parenthesis. At the end with the equals, you put a bracket. This is interval notation. How do we do interval notation when I have an interval that, that only has one boundary? So x is greater than or equal to 2. So my boundary here is 2. And now all the values greater than 2 are going to be shading this way right here. And then once again, because there's an equal, I'm going to put a bracket. So in interval notation, I need to think about what's the furthest left this goes, that's the lower bound. What's the furthest right this goes, that's the upper bound. So the furthest left this goes, look, I'm follow my finger, this does not go any further left than two. There's no shading on this end. So my lower bound is two. Now what we use when there is no upper bound, notice this interval keeps going forever and ever and ever to the right, we use a symbol called infinity. And the infinity symbol looks like an 8 that's laying on its side. Infinity is not a destination, it is a direction. It's telling us which way this is going. At the 2 side, because there's an equal, I'm going to put a bracket. And always, always, always at the infinity end we use a parenthesis. Same thing is true when I have all my values less than negative 6. Once again, negative 6 is my boundary. I'm going to shade all the values that are less than negative 6, which are all these right here. I do not have an equals, so I'm going to put a parenthesis. Now this time, the number line goes forever to the left without stopping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a negative infinity. The sign is important. When you're telling everybody it's going to the left, you need to put the negative there. The upper bound is the negative 6. And once again, I have no equality here, so I'm going to put a parenthesis at the negative 6 side, and you always put a parenthesis at the infinity side. One more example, just for fun. All the values less than or equal to 0. I'm going to put 0 right here. That's my boundary. If I'm graphing this, I shade to the left. There is an equal, so I'm going to put a bracket. And now when I construct the boundary, when I construct my interval notation, the furthest to the left this goes is negative infinity. The furthest to the right this goes is zero. Always put a parenthesis at infinity, put a bracket at zero, and you're done.